Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're going to look at Bitcoin and its practice run of a bear market. Now, before you get crazy into the comment section, fearful that I'm spreading FUD and now back flipping into a bear market, chill out, chill the hell out. We're going to look through what we have uh, spoken about over the last six weeks, what we've seen on the charts, what's potentially coming up. We're just looking at probabilities here. So if you love the sound of that, well, if you want to learn more and you like the sound of learning more, hit the like button down below, right over here, bell notification icon after you've hit that, that subscribe button. Cool. I'll just get my wording back. Now, follow me on Instagram and Twitter for daily Q&As and news updates. Great stuff over there as well. Let's dive in. Let's update the market caps. Bitcoin, 648 billion. Remember when it was over $1 trillion and that was kind of the level we thought we'd never go under that again. And market cap was at 2.57 trillion and we thought we'd never go under 2 trillion again. And Ethereum, 400 billion. We we're going closer to half a trillion dollars. Remember all of these times. We're, we're talking about Bitcoin and the, uh, the run-in, the next phase of this bull market cycle. Sure, we can be in a bear market, but I see this long term as going a hell of a lot further. So it's a really important point to remember where we've come from and etch that into your memory because when we get to moving past all time highs again, that will quickly be lost. We've talked about taking profits on the channel, especially through the periods where people were most, most bullish. And those are the times that we need to be looking to take profits when everyone is so greedy. So really etch these emotional times in your memory. I, I just, I can't stress that enough. Uh, looking at the rest of the market caps, 46 billion for BB, BNB and for ADA. Dogecoin is slowly fading out of the top five. Well, it is, it's at six now. And the heaviest dump we've seen was uh, Uniswap uh, in the top 20. Even Polygon hasn't fared so bad, but it is it has traded down pretty well from its highs. So down 6% in the last 24 hours. Last one here is Solana, one of my other favorites, down uh, 9%. Let's take a look at the fear and greed. Extreme fear, 10. Yesterday, 18. Last week, 14. So still extreme fear, but probably one of the lowest points that we've seen this bull market. Now, if you remember the video from two days ago, I was looking at an ultimate crypto crash strategy, looking at the fear and greed index, just basically reading off this and applying that to the chart. Super simple strategy, but you can add filters to it to improve the profitability of it. If you followed this, it looks like a pretty good strategy so far. All right, so have a look at it. It's tested over the last three or so years. Definitely do some more work to it, but it's a good starting guide. If you've ever wanted a trading plan, check that out. It's super simple and a nice place to start from, especially if you're new, starting with a nice, simple trading plan and then adding to it. All right, let's take a look at the chart where we are today. So these little blue things people were asking on that video, it's just a little setting on this side here. Just click that. Now you've got a little blue arrow. So let's get rid of those. Let's look at Bitcoin for today. It is now down four days. Remember how much we've talked about counting days. Super important. It gave us this signal early on in the crash. And while everyone was talking up uh, market going to 70 and 80K, we weren't so sure. We were waiting on further clarification, further further signals to get above 60,500. I, I felt like it should have been a meme of mine that it was talked about so much. Well, at least I was saying it. 11 straight days down, got to get above 60,500. That's just like the the short-term signals to tell us that we're going bullish again. But no, this happened. There were some uh, slight bullish signals. There was a few bearish signals in that, but this was the major point here. So we've looked at that through the areas of fifty to $60,000. Now we are down four days after only rising for three days. So we're still more to the downside than we are to the upside. Let's go through a few notes before we head back to the charts. I've got a few notes here. Forget paper hands. Paper hands is just another stupid noob, noob term to separate you from your profits. Okay. There are times where it's probably better to be holding than to be selling. Uh, look, I get called this in the comments all the time. What do I care? You know, if I've got my profits and I'm ready to go again, call me paper hands. I don't give a crap. 
paper emotions are the real problems. So if you get triggered, if you're weak at heart when it comes to your money and investing, do something about that. Become diamond emotions. That's the more important part of the game, not diamond hands. You know, we, we know it's a joke. It's a stupid thing. But some people, I guess, get married to it because you want to pay out someone else for uh, not holding because you're holding. You know, so if, if you're finding yourself in that trap and you can see it and you want to get out of it, do something about it. Forget the paper hands, diamond hands, garbage. Get into the emotional side of things. Become diamond emotions. Investors are furious. I agree. We've seen a lot of talk about alt season after alt season after alt season after alt season and just keep buying, just keep holding, just keep buying, just keep holding. I think it's because many people don't really understand what is going on in the charts and what goes on in the markets. I have talked about that myself. I have talked about altcoin seasons and uh, obviously buying Bitcoin, but I don't look to buy Bitcoin at all time highs, especially when the volume is drying up. And you know, I talk about volume so much. So Bitcoin bear market practice run. I don't think this is the ultimate bear market ending the, the bull run. I definitely subscribe to the Benjamin Cohen theory that we have an extended cycle. I don't necessarily think we have to have a, an exact four year repeat, a four year cycle repeat like of every other cycle we've seen because that's a playbook and we don't get playbooks in this game. It Something always comes out of uh, the unexpected, but we can start to read it on a chart. So this is why I'm calling it a, a bear market practice run. If you can weather this and learn from what's happening in the market now, I think you're going to do a hell of a lot better come the next move down and then into a bear market because you just don't know if it's going to be a bear or a move down until a few scenarios play out. So how many times have you heard me say all of the following? Let me know in the comments. Now, this is my message and my opinion of the market. Let's start with April 18th. First warning, three days down, three days down. That was the video I got it out on this day on April 18th, which you can see on the channel. Next hour or two or three or four, it crashed. The market had a strong, strong correction. And following that, there was 11 straight days down, 11 straight days down. This three day down rule is a, is a GAN rule from a major top. And in this case, it was the all time high. You probably want to see it from the all time high for it to work. It's not just a three days down from any period in the market. It's specifically at all time highs and major, major highs. So that was the first thing. Three days down, we were kind of worried that we saw that from this top. That was at $59,000 on a video on the channel. Did I think the market was over? No, I didn't want to believe it was over because we're so it was so early in the piece. I definitely don't want to believe it's over, but I'm looking at this. As you can see, volume is weakening as we go up. Corrections are small, moves up and nothing. This is just telling us for two months that there's nothing going on here. Wyckoff method. All right, we get the crack. We get the breakdown here. Okay, I don't believe it's over. What did we talk about in the video? So this is a practice run moving forward next time. All of the emotion at this time was based around uh, altcoins running up so hard. Ethereum did run up. Here I'm talking about consolidating. I'm like, look, I'm not sure if the market's over yet. I'm not going to be the one to call the market over uh, because you could say that many times uh, previously. But I want to take some, some measures to protect myself. Okay, so let's start consolidating. I don't know if it's fully over. I like Ethereum. Ethereum hadn't had a run yet and it was really building up. So we were looking at Ethereum, buying more Ethereum. And from this period, this is where Ethereum started to go nuts. It had its move down to 2000, went up to 4000, 4400, just from those, those two weeks there from mid to late April into May. So that's the first thing we did. Consolidate, get out of altcoins which weren't working. Sure, some other altcoins went off. This isn't about being 100%. There's no perfection. It's about getting more money, uh, basically in, in, making sure that you're you're here to fight another day and that you've got some ammo for when the market is down. That's what we're talking about when it comes to consolidating again. So I just like the a simple plan, getting into major projects, getting out of small crap that I didn't believe in, stop taking big, big gambles on altcoins. Sure, take a few small gambles because there were still trades to be made in this time. Take some small gambles. If it doesn't work out, doesn't matter, you know, it's it's not like it's 10% of my portfolio, it's 1%, 2%, maybe half a percent, doesn't really matter. Uh, that's going to depend on your portfolio and sometimes it won't work for other people. So honestly, stick to your gun, stick to your plan. 
Uh, the other thing is stable coins. You know, if I'm unsure, there's no harm in being in stable coins. I'll diamond hand those stable coins uh, until I feel the time is right. So that was the first few signals here. 18th of April, first warning, three days down. What do we do? Consolidate cryptos, no more big position altcoin speculations. So I don't want to get a big position into altcoins. If I saw something that was decent, small. Then a lot of them started to fail at 50%. And I thought something was wrong. You know, something was up and I was getting out of them. Sure, small losses, that's fine. That's not a problem at all. Weekly swing break, break that we there's taught in the investor accelerator. That was a signal that I could have held uh, and, and stuck to my guns even harder. This is the weekly chart. Here is a weekly swing. It broke down. That was at $50,000, 50400 A break of that, you'll need to have a filter of how far down you want that to break. That was a fantastic signal. Break of a weekly chart. Doesn't mean that things are over. It's just one strong signal. The market could have turned around, put in a higher low, broke the next high and gone again. So the um, what you have to cop when you have signals like this to protect positions is uh, getting in at a higher price. So if you're out at 49K because the low is at 50K and then the market showed us a high again above these highs of um, 59,500, so say 61K, maybe you want to get in above the old all-time high for more confirmation. You have to forego 30, 40%. All right, that's just the way that trading works and how you protect your profits in case of a bigger fall, uh, but then you just lose some of the upside, okay? So it's a, it's a difficult one to swallow and difficult one to implement, but that's how a trading plan works. That's the weekly swing break. Next, 11 straight days down. I've said that multiple, multiple times now. Massive signal, low volume, weak bounce in May. Look at this bounce up. Volume started to get back in here, but it just was not what the low was. And then we saw low volume on the move up again into the highs. And so this was still having me worried. We didn't break the 60,000 level at 60 and a half thousand. Again, Wyckoff method, um, one, of the, one of the rules in there, which we can see on the day of the 18th of April, another signal, our message, our opinion of the market, that was just showing you more bearish signs. Next, uh, only Bitcoin buying on major dips. So talking about buying the dip, buying the dip, not all dips are created equal. Here's a dip, here's another dip, here's another dip. <laughs> this was a dip. This was a dip. This was also a dip here. This couple of days down. I remember the the market and it was just the the video titles were all by the dip, by the dip. I know I use those titles, but I want to warn people as well that not all dips are created equal. So how do you get people's attention? It's a dip. That's what people know how to search for. So if you're aware of it, great. Uh, I'm really grateful that you're hopefully improving your your profits and your game. So that was the area through here. April this dips, okay? They're not all the same. If you look at a chart, you can tell they're not all the same. And on those dips, I'm not buying all these little crappy coins that, oh, sorry, not these ones here, but just other stuff that people are saying, you know, I want to get this coin, I want to get this. Uh, you know, is this coin going to go up 10x from this point? I highly doubt it because of how high we were. But I'm happy to buy bigger projects. And some of them, I didn't make money on, all right? But they're the ones that are in my portfolio. And that's why I keep with Bitcoin and some stable coins during that period, just in case I don't play out. Like Link, Link now has been dumped. Link is Link is well and truly down from that point. So they're in losses. But the idea here is that we are holding more stronger positions and some stable coins just in case. So as I've said many times, I play it a little more conservative than just going like aping it on some old coin project that it can just potentially go 10, 20, 30x. And if I do, they're small positions. They're small positions. What else do we do? Keep consolidating on bounces, stable coins, Bitcoin, Ethereum. Again, I feel like a broken record. We're talking about that in videos. The timing of this, 57 weeks up. 50% of seven, uh, 57 weeks is about 28, 29 weeks. Let's go to sore neck. All right, <laughs> let's go and look at the weeks. This is in uh, videos as well. So just make sure you're counting timeframes. 50 57 weeks. What can happen from here? I suspect we'll be under the all-time high for a few months to several months. 28 weeks, which is halfway of that period, that's about six or so months, six and a half months. Six months from the top in April gives us 28 weeks is into November. Sounds about right to me. Sell in May, go away, and 
somewhere around that September to November period is when the market starts to start to get a move on. Maybe we'll get a higher low. Maybe we'll start to really show some signs of strength through there. But that's what I got my eye on at this point from what I'm seeing. If I'm wrong in that view, I'll know sooner rather than later. I don't have to wait until November to figure out whether my position was wrong or not. But that's an idea so that I'm not freaking out when the market's not up next week or the week after that or 10 weeks from now. I've got an idea of where I'm going. All along, I've talked about the market. I'm like 99.99% sure on that. Screenshot this if you need to, but 300K by September, I think you can almost cross that off the list now. You're going to need to get this market to $6.5 trillion in we're basically June, so in three months, three and a half months, you six and a half trillion in three months. It's not impossible, but I'm not betting on that. No way am I betting on 300 or even a 200K by September. Wyckoff distribution accumulation timeframes. I'm just going to echo uh, ben, ben Cohen's comments here as well. Looking at Wyckoff distribution, it's stuff that, yes, we've looked at on the channel many times before. We're looking at day counts and volume counts. Uh, to to your credit, to the viewers, I never talked about it as being Wyckoff. I didn't think people were interested to hear about Wyckoff. And when I did talk about it, there wasn't much, you know, anything brought up. But that's essentially what we do when we look at bar patterns along with volume. So it's volume spread analysis. Uh, it's in the books that I've talked about, Trading in the Shadows of the Smart Money. There would be a link to that in the description down below if you want to learn more. There's plenty of Richard Wyckoff books that you can go and learn about. But if you're going to apply a method, apply it to a time frame and stick with the time frame. You, you don't apply it to a four hour or one minute or anything less and then expect a big move. If you're applying this to the daily, two daily, uh, weekly, you can expect a bigger move. But if you go and apply it to a four hour or a one hour, you can't expect this to uh, have the same sort of impact because you're looking at a low time frame. Um, if you can understand that, you're going to do a hell of a lot better. Yes, there are plenty of people who just look at one hours and then expect big moves for this thing to take out all time highs because there's a, a pattern on the four hour chart. It doesn't work like that. That's not how it works. You're looking at macro stuff, you're going to get macro moves. If you're looking at micro moves, you'll get micro moves. If you're looking at micro time frames, you'll get micro moves. That's what I've got for you guys in today's video, talking about Bitcoin bear market practice run. You can see all of the signals that came through. You remember the videos I was putting out, especially with ADA, which we were following very, very well, uh, hitting the tops, getting in again, hitting the next tops, calling tops, uh, breakouts. It's not that difficult. It just takes practice. It's a lot of little rules practice time and time again that allow you to see what potentially was in your favor to happen next. So that's all I wanted to mention here. When we get really strong fear or really strong greed coming up next, go back to a plan. Set a plan up now and just remember that when that meme coin stuff goes nuts, you're probably getting close to an end. Maybe stuff will double from that point, but you're probably getting close to an end and it might only be days or weeks away. So go back, do some testing now while the market may get quieter, you know, while the while those prices are down. Sure, we will get pushes to the upside. You know, maybe we'll get some breakouts of these highs and we, we head up to the 48K levels, the 50K levels. You know, my price ranges that I've got here with the, the alert zones at around that 45K is really where I want to see the market begin to consolidate above. This is not to say we're going straight down as well. So I'm sure you guys have been following a while, understand that. It's not like we just go straight down, straight back up. This thing can move and trick people, get it up to 48K and then we head down again and break some lows. So that's what I wanted to mention to you guys. Uh, enjoy what you are doing. If you need some time off, definitely take that. Rejuvenate, come back strong and hard. Uh, hopefully you uh, have got a dollar cost averaging plan and you are creating and improving on your trading as well. If you want to learn more, you can join us on the Investor Accelerator membership. Link to that is down below. Check it out. Wyckoff method, GAN method, lots of the stuff that I talk about here in more detail, over six hours of course content, plus more coming as well. Volume courses and swing courses are coming in that course, all included in your membership down there. So check it out. I'll see you on Instagram for daily Q&As, Twitter for crypto updates throughout. 
all of these periods of the crypto market. We're just investing long term. This is what we do. Like the video up if you found some value. Subscribe to the channel. Bell notification icon. Anything else I missed is in the description down below. See you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.